All right, so we've reached a tragedy, and that's a bad thing. And so the next question is, what's the solution to the problem? How do we avoid the tragedy resulting from uh, resource depletion? That means we have to break this vicious cycle somehow. That means we need to change the incentive structure, and that points us back to the initial two cells in the box. We have a resource, and we have people who want to uh, use the resource. Everything in business ethics and political economy is controversial. Uh, while most people will agree with Hardin, the vast majority of people, that their Hardin has identified something correctly, there is an ironclad logic to what has been presented here. What is disagreed upon uh, very fundamentally is what the proper solution right, to the problem is. And the proper solution to the problem depends on a proper analysis of what gives rise to the problem in the first place. So what we have here is two initial scenario or two initial uh, factors right at work, and the problem is that jointly they send us down a certain developmental or lack of developmental path. And the difference is going to be whether we say if these two factors jointly are causing this problem, whether we think this factor is the problematic factor or this factor is the problematic factor. One side of the debate is going to say the problem is that we have a resource held in common. And what we then need to do is change the incentive structure, the, the bad incentive structure that is built into resources being held in commons. So we need to abandon the commons, right, so to speak. So solution one is going to say that the problem is the commons. It's fine that people are self-interested. Right? In this case, people are farmers. Right? Farmers naturally and healthily, they want to put cows out to use the resource. They want to feed themselves, feed their families, become prosperous, right, and so forth. Uh, that is fine, but this is the thing that is the fly in the ointment, and this is the thing that needs to be changed. So if we uh, are going to uh, see this as the problem, the question then will be, what is the solution so the solution then is going to be to privatize the resource. We need to institute property rights in the resource. And what that will then mean in our working example, if we imagine 10,000 acres of pasture land and we've got 50 people right, who are uh, resource users, what we will then do just crudely to do the math is to take the 10,000 acres, divide it equally among the 50 resources, or 50 resource users, the 50 farmers. Each person gets 200 acres. That becomes their private property. And so what we then have is <clears throat> the institution of private property. How does that then change the incentives? Right? Under a commons, I can't stop you from doing what you want with the resource, and you can't stop me right, from doing what I wish with the resource. But under a private property regime, my property becomes mine. I can do what I want with it, and I can also prevent you. There are legal protections in place to stop you from using res my resource. And the same thing holds for you. You can use your resource how you wish, and you can prevent other people from using your resource or abusing your resource. So how then will self-interested people act under the institution of private property? And the argument on this side is to say that this changes the incentives right, quite dramatically. Right, this is now my 200 acres, and I will then look at it in terms of, say, the problems. Do I have any sort of an incentive to overuse the resource, to just put as many cows out there as I possibly can to maximize my short-term gain? So I have then an incentive right, to respect the capacity of the land. So if I've got my 200 acres, and I know that each cow, say, and I don't know the numbers off the top of my head, needs, uh, uh, say, two acres of, uh, of pasture land to support it during the course of a year, then I can do the math and say I can at most then have 100 cattle right, in this particular place. If I uh, don't respect that limit, then I'm just setting myself up for, for long-term fa uh, long failure. So I then have a respect for the limits right, of the resource. 
Now, I might then also uh, think about improvements. Is there a way that I can increase the carrying capacity of the land or increase the, uh, the, the value of the resource in this particular place? And uh, then I have an incentive to do so if the cost-benefit right works out. So will I put a well in on my land? Well, I'll, I'll do my, uh, my, my research and figure out it's going to cost me this amount of money in order to put the well in. Uh, I will then, since it's on my private property, bear 100% of that cost. But then at the same time, I'm going to get 100% of the benefits because only my cows can use that well. And so I do my cost-benefit calculation, and if it works out, if I'm going to be profitable in doing so, I'm more likely to do so. Right? Or I might also say if I put a well in and the well produces a great amount of water, I've got more than enough for my cows to use. I can in turn sell some of that water to my neighbors and therefore make more profit. So uh, my incentive then to do improvements, right, increases. Same thing holds with respect to maintenance. If we go back to the example of doing weeding, I've got my 200 acres, should I do the weeding? I can say, well, yeah, if I do the weeding, then there's gonna be more grass for my cows. Weeding costs a certain amount, costs time, or if I use herbicides, it costs a certain amount to purchase the herbicides. I will bear all of those costs, but then at the same time, I will get all of the benefits. I do the cost-benefit analysis, and my incentive to do maintenance, right, is going to increase. Also, since this is private property, I have uh, an incentive to do all of these things over the long term. So we have long-term improvements, long-term maintenance. So the long-term uh, value, so to speak, of the resource goes up. If we think, for example, maybe I'm a younger farmer right now, but at some point I want to retire and get out of the farming business. So when I retire, though, I want to sell my farm and uh, make sure that I've got enough money say, then saved up uh, in order to be able to support myself in my old age. So I think ahead, what is going to put me in a position to sell my farm for the most amount of money? Well, what will put me in that position is if I've looked after the resource, uh, done proper maintenance and done improvements, because the more that I do those things, the more in the long term my farm is going to have higher property value so I can sell it for more. So my self-interest then will lead me to pay attention to the long-term right, value of the resource. Or another self-interested consideration, maybe when I retire, I will want to turn the farm over to my kids. And uh, as a parent, I love my children and I want them to have the best possible advantages in life. Uh, and so that then will mean if I'm going to turn the farm over to them, I want the farm to be in as good as possible condition uh, for my children, since I'm thinking about their long-term futures and so forth, and so I have an incentive then to uh, look after these things as well. Now the other thing then is that the long-term value is going to be maximized, but that also this is going to be socially win-win. Right? Over here we had zero-sum competition. This side of the argument is going to say that this will, property rights regime, lessen significantly the win-win right, nature of competition. So for example, uh, one of the maintenance issues might arise. If you are my neighbor, uh, I want to put a fence up to stop my cows from wandering off or to stop your cows from wandering over onto my property. Under a commons scenario, uh, uh, I can't put a fence up right, unless I get other people's permission or maybe I can put it up there but they can't uh, stop me from doing so but then I can't also stop them from tearing the fence down or otherwise uh, ignoring the fences being there. But under a circumstance of private property, we have an incentive to work together right, with respect to the fence issue. So I might then say, I think it's a good idea to have a fence and maybe I've got three or four boundaries to attend to here and I do my cost calculations, but it would make sense for me to go to you if you are my neighbor and say, here we share this joint boundary. It would be to your advantage if there were a fence there. It's also to my advantage if there's a fence there. So why don't we cooperate and split the cost of the fence 
uh, and we're then more likely to work together with each other to engage in a particular improvement right, in that particular case. So socially, that's an increase in win-win relationships. Also, if I'm improving my property and I'm engaging in maintenance to my property, that increases the long-term value of my property. But there are network effects, right? If you are the neighbor right, of someone who's got a really uh, well-maintained, attractive farm, then that increases by the property value of your farm, right, all by itself, the, the, uh, the network effect with, with respect to real estate prices. Also, it gives you an incentive, perhaps uh, on a keeping up with the Joneses uh, uh, social dynamic, or just maybe uh, you see that I did something on my farm and you say, oh, that's really cool. I never thought of that. You learn from me and you go ahead and do the same sort of improvement on your farm. Or maybe there's something that you do on your farm that I think is a really good idea. I learn from that and I do it on, on my, my uh, farm as well. And so once again, what we have is socially win-win benefits. Now the argument here then is, if we start putting labels to it, that the best way to solve the problem of the commons is to institute free market capitalism. And the features of free market capitalism that are being uh, uh, tapped into here are self-interested profit-seeking, which is seen as a healthy, positive, motivational uh, force the institution of privatization, and so private property protections right, for various kinds of resources. And the argument then is that private property and combined with self-interest leads people to maximize in a healthy long-term respect the, uh, the, uh, the economic value of the resources, and that free market capitalism's social dynamic is socially win-win. All right, so this is then what we will call the free market capitalist solution, and that's the first of two solutions to the problem.